Welcome to Revival is Here Again with Apostle Goodhart. God is about to speak directly to you as this message is guaranteed to impact your life. As you listen today, expect that God's word has been sent in your direction to bring about revival, healing, restoration, and transformation. With faith in your heart and great expectation, join me to receive God's word through his choice vessel, Apostle Goodhart O. Equeme. If you have your Bible, please turn together with me to Isaiah 37. NKJV is my choice this morning. Let's go together. One, two, three, go. And the remnant who have escaped of the house of Judah shall again take root downward and bear fruit upward. For out of Jerusalem shall go a remnant and those who escape from Mount Zion the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Praise God. For an assignment this morning, intimacy, the covenant pathway to multiplication. Intimacy. Somebody says intimacy is into me you see. Intimacy, the covenant pathway to multiplication. Our Father and our God, you've been kind and gracious to us as a family. Shy of under one year, you've shown us mercy in the city and in the nation. Thank you that you are building your church and the gate of hell cannot, will not, shall never prevail. I beseech you once more again to take a coal of fire from the altar of heaven. Among the lips and the tongues of clay of your seven sons that I will come to your people in this hall and across the nations with a thus saith the Lord. Move every man, boy, girl, under the sound of the voice of this preacher from where we are to the place called destiny. Let devils be terrified. Let the saints be edified. Let Jesus alone be glorified. Well, thou but the praise and the glory be yours and yours alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody shout a victorious amen. amen. Please be seated in God's wonderful presence. You're looking very wonderful this morning. Good morning and bright morning to all of you. Intimacy, the covenant pathway to multiplication. Since the very nature and character of God is to give, is to bless, is to increase, is to deliver, is to transform, is to release, and is to multiply. These are part of the expression of the very nature and the character of the God we serve. Understanding the true nature and character of God is a wonderful, or as a wonderful and a loving father, gives us a natural platform to believe him. Faith becomes simplified when we know that God is a good God. Praise God, somebody. Uh, my children don't struggle to ask me to do things for them. Over the passage of time of fathering them, they've seen enough proof, enough witness, experientially, that their father at least makes human effort to be a good dad. So when they're in need, they don't, I believe God, daddy, will you bless me? No, they don't believe God consciously anymore, unconsciously, ah, yeah, over a track record of experience and encounters, they know if they are something worthy to be given, their dad will give them. Likewise, when we secure our mind with the revelation and the understanding of the goodness of God being a loving father, a, a God who is willing to give liberally and generously, then we don't struggle to believe him. God is not just a giver, saints. God is a generous and a liberal giver. They're two different things. You can give miserly. You can give measurely. You can give cautiously or you can give liberally or generously. The God we serve is a liberal giver 
and a generous giver. You see, God gave so much, all right, so that he ended up giving himself to you in the person of Jesus. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever, which means anybody, including you this Sunday morning, whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. Everlasting life. There is such a thing called everlasting life. It's not just eternal life. Because we all have a measure of eternal life. What do I mean? You see, when you were born, God gave you life. And based on your choices and decisions, as long as you are in this physical body, you will determine what kind of life you have beyond your death. If you choose Jesus, you are going to enjoy longevity of Zoe, the God kind of life. But if you don't choose Jesus, unfortunately, you will enjoy everlasting life or eternal life but unfortunately it is life in death that means apart from god's presence so we we'll all live forever where you live there and after will be a choice you make or you made here on this side of eternity and i pray this morning if you haven't made the choice for jesus sincerely completely totally unequivocally that this will be a day for you to say jesus take over the driving wheel of my life and my destiny guess what when jesus allowed to be your pilot your plane can never crash land your boat can never sink your car can never explode and i pray somebody under the summer voice you made jesus the captain of your ship your car and your boat the Bible declares in Mark 10 45, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life. Hear this a ransom for many. Ransom means sacrifice, ransom means my life for your life. The word redeem or redemption is an exchange of life for life. And God is saying that I so love you, mankind, fallen in sin. I gave you my son to give you his life in exchange for your death. That means you don't need to be bound under, under, under the captivity of sin and the grave anymore. If you accept Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, it's a ransom for you. That means uh, yeah, he, is, uh, he is the scapegoat that was allowed to escape for you to be free. Mm -hmm. That's a ransom. A ransom. How he loved us. The Bible begins to tell us how compassionate this God is. Hmm. Psalm 145, 8 and 9 says, The Lord is gracious. He is full of compassion. That's your God. He is slow to anger and great in mercy. The Lord is good not to some old. <laughs> he's good to all and he's tender I love the word tender his tender mercies are over all his works his tender mercies are over all his works saints our God is a God hear me who does not withhold mm -mm. there is no good thing you desire that your God has not already made available for you and to you. Psalm 84 verse 11. We're on a journey this morning. For the Lord God is a son and a shield. The Lord will give grace and the glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. So no good thing will God withhold from me as I walk uprightly. Praise God. Psalm 145 15 and 16 says, hear this, the eyes of all look expectantly to you and you give them their food in due season. Hear this, you open your hand and you satisfy the desire of Every, see that word again? Every, or all living things. 
Saints, again, I want to buttress. God is not only a giver. God is a liberal giver. God is a generous giver. Hear this. And God is an exuberant giver. All right. Jesus begins to declare in Luke 6 38 says, You give, it shall be given unto you. How? Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. So shall men give to your bosom. So, so God begins to show that this is my nature and character to not only bless you just enough, but to bless you how? More than enough. Press down, shake it together, and run it over. This is the nature and the character of your God. Gives liberally. Gives generously. The children of Israel were at three points in their journey towards Canaan. First, they were in Egypt. Second, they were in the wilderness and root Canaan. And ultimately, they got into their Canaan. Your wilderness, better still, your Egypt re represents when you are, please listen carefully, when you are in a state and phase of life, hear this, of not enough. So me, not enough. Fantastic. Now, there is a phase where you move from your Egypt to your wilderness. You move from not enough to just enough. But as good as that is, as commendable as it is, God's ultimate desire is to push you from the realm of just enough to the realm of more than enough. And for somebody under the sound of my voice, I don't know where you are in your walk with your God. I speak to you the next level. Your amen needs revival. That means whether you are the back or whether God will push you to the next level. Somebody shout a big amen. It will not be by power, not by might, but by the mercy, by the grace, and by the favor. May the wind of God blow beneath your sail. Carry you from your here to your there, even in the name of Jesus Christ. May the things have been a prayer point hitherto up to today become a testimony for you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Tests have been turned for somebody's testimonies. That's a word for somebody here. I say it again that test, test, test under the sound of the voice of this preacher. Tests have been turned for your testimonies in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at this. Romans 8.32 Remember I said to you that God gave so much to you that he gave you and I his very best. What is his best? Who is his best? Is Jesus. Wow, I love Jesus. Mm. Romans 8.32 and KJV says, He who did not spare oh, his own son I love this but delivered him up for us all this gift of Jesus is for all not for the saints alone not for the holier than thou alone it's for all it doesn't matter where you've been where you are it's for everybody Jesus for everyone for God so loved the entire world. Don't exempt yourself. You haven't you haven't done bad so bad that the blood can't rescue you. No, sir. How can we think that sin is more powerful than the blood of Jesus Christ? The blood will take you from the lowest gutter to the uppermost part. That's the blood. So if you're under a sense of guilt and contempt today, hey, tell the devil the blood has liberated me. Amen. God is able to make all grace, sorry, for he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him? Say with him. Oh, say with him. We're going somewhere. Say with him. Also freely give us all things. That's a clue. <laughs> God doesn't want to bless you, sir, outside God. Oh boy, I feel like jumping. I, you need to get this. It will change your life. God does not want to give you any blessing that will exempt him. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No. Every blessing of God includes him. 
any blessing you've received that takes God out of your equation is satanic. This is deep stuff, man. Well, go somewhere. You're going to get rougher. <laughs> I said again, any blessing, house, car, wife, husband, children, name it all, that takes you away from God as seeming blessing as it is, is a curse. Hear this. Bible says, Proverbs 10, 22, the blessings of God makes rich and adds no sorrow with it. So when God blesses, he's complete and entire. Why? He's part of the package. Oh boy. <laughs> you see, I'll give you a story because of time. In Genesis 33, sorry, Exodus 33, shortly after the children of Israel had raised a golden calf and committed a great sin to God, Moses came down from the mountain you, you start this to, to find to be so. God said to Moses that Moses, let me read that to you. I want you, I want you to see it. Exodus 33. It's just, I'm jumping ahead of myself, but I want us to get there. Exodus 33. Ah, yeah, yeah. Help me, Lord Jesus. 33 verse 1. Thank you. Let's read this. I want you to get this. It's important. 33 verse 1 and 3 says, Then the Lord said unto Moses, Depart, all right, depart and go up from here. Remember, don't forget, the journey is from Egypt to where? To where? No, 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 no. Egypt where? Then wilderness. Then where? That's a journey. One, two, three. So Egypt, wilderness, promised land. So they are now in the wilderness, step two. And they were looking forward to going to step three. Who wants to go to a kingdom land? I do. Don't you? I do. But hear this. This will bless you. Hey. Then the Lord said to Moses, depart and go off from here. You and the people whom you have <laughs> this God eh? whom you have brought out, you know, when they mess up, it's Moses' people. <laughs> when my kids are good, they look like me. Like that, that don't look. When they're not so so good, look like your mom. Look at <laughs> so God and Moses had this thing going on. When they're bad, Moses, your people, your people. <laughs> yes, what I'm saying. Yeah. So you and the people whom you have brought oh, it was Moses. Come on, it's God that brought them out. <laughs> brought out of the land of Egypt to the land of which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, all right, to your descendants, I will give it, all right, and I will send my angel before you, uh, yeah, and I will drive out the Canaanite and the Amorite, the Hittite, Perizzite, and all the ites, Hivites, ites, 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 all right, all the ites. Go on to a land flowing with milk and honey, for I Please listen. For I will not go up in your midst. Oh boy. Lest I consume you on the way. For you are a stiff necked people. Are you reading the Bible? So God was saying here. Thank you darling. I love, I love that. Company. Yes. I like people like that. You front row. <laughs> Thank you. You're a precious friend. <laughs> Some guys look like you. I don't like people like that. I just look at I don't look at your faces. I don't care. I look at me and say, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. I look at you. <laughs> look at Pastor Fred. Look at Pastor Fred. You know, look at <laughs> Some of you, you, you get it. It's okay. Praise God. We're all on a journey. So God was saying here, beloved, now guess what, guys? You've messed up. You've raised a golden calf that you said delivered you when I delivered you all these many years. So therefore, you go on to your paradise. Get your Lamborghini, get your S class, get your nice husband, the prince in shining armor, get your, your 36, 20, I don't know, but get your sweetheart as your wife. Yeah, praise God. I, I, I'm not blind, I see. Okay, the point is <laughs> get what you desire to get, but guess what? You're going to have it without me. Hey, this is serious stuff, man. Most people I know will say, wonderful. I'm going to get my car. My mortgage will be burnt. I'll be free from having to pay a mortgage. Now I get married. Now I have my twins. And, but, but, but Moses said, wait a minute. This is a trick. You are saying to me that I can go into Canaan. You will help me dispossess them of my enemies. But you are not going with me. Moses said, no, 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 no. Look at what Moses said. Let's jump to verse 15, 16. You need to get this. 
33, 15, 16. Then he said to him, that's Moses now, ha, Baba God, if your presence does not go up with us, do not bring us up from here. That is serious. For how then will it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight except you go with us? So we shall be separate your people and I from all the people who are upon the face of the earth. You see, what Moses said here was this, and that's where I'm, I want us to get to. Ah, yeah. That anything that looks good, anything that looks like a blessing as far as this world's judgment is, all right? If you are not in it, I don't want it. And it's not all that glitters that is gold. Track with me. It's not everything that men call good that is God. May the Lord give us understanding. It is easier to know what is clearly evil than to be able to decipher severe what is clearly evil or better still, what looks good but in the eyes of God, is evil. You know, in our day and age, we've, we've flipped the coin. I'm bad means you're good. Your good means you're not, you know, I'm bad. You got, that guy's bad, man, he's bad. We've flipped the coin. <laughs> My son is laughing over there. Yeah. So, 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 language becomes what you make out of it. So, man of God, you're just, you're just old school. Let us alone, it's our language. Yeah, you think so, right? Yeah, 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 keep on, keep on speaking on you just you just tickle me to death. Keep on tickling yourself to death. You'll soon pack up. Oh, just tickle me to death. No, death is death. Praise God. Oh, I just it just I, I woke up on the wrong side. I just just you know, just you know, just stressed out. Yeah, you know, you feel very proud, being stressed out, yeah. I'm just stressed out. Yeah. I need a cook. I need, you, be stressed out. It's a joke, right? But you're being stressed out. Because your words carry power, either death or life. Yeah. Don't play games with words. By your words, you're either delivered or you're bound. So words are important. Words mean what they mean. Praise God. So in this case, Moses said, wait a minute. I'm not going to go into breakthrough or break forth without you. I need you in my break forth. You know, any breakthrough that you have, God is not in it. It won't last. Anything that looks a blessing looks, right? But God is not there. Does not have the capacity to sustain itself. It's only the blessings of the Lord that sustains his blessing. Somebody here. Ah, yeah, yeah. Shout a big amen. All right. I went ahead of myself, but I needed to. Now, the blessing of God for us, as we saw last Sunday, and the mandate of God for us is that we are fruitful, we we'll multiply, we replenish, we subdue the earth, and then we we'll dominate. This is not only a desire, but this is what God wired you to be and to do. In fact, when it says in Genesis 128, be fruitful, it's not a recommendation and advice. It's a commandment. So you're commanded by God what? to be fruitful. So in every area of your endeavor that is good and godly, you have what it takes to be fruitful. All that you will ever need and desire on this side of eternity has already been provided for us in redemption in the death, in the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. If you don't have the dividends or the result of those blessings, guess what? There is a devil on the run, on the loose, better still. 
He is the one we need to learn to resist steadfastly and take rightfully what belongs to us as God's children and God's sons and daughters. It is already given. It is done. It is yours for the taken. Bible declares in Genesis 2.24, as they began to prepare to come into Canaan. Remember, Egypt, bondage, not enough. Wilderness, just enough. Canaan what? More than enough. God wants you to journey from your Egypt through your wilderness to your Canaan. He said this to them. Deuteronomy 2.24, rise, take your journey and cross over the river Anon. He says, look, we prayed this morning about looking. Look, you look. I have given, not I will give. So in the realm of the spirit, God has made available. He has given your multiplication, your fruitfulness, your breakthrough, your increase, your, your excellent grace is given into your hand. Uh, um, Sihon the Amorite, king of Heshbon, and his land begin to possess it and engage him in battle. So though God gave you, all right, is your responsibility to possess it. And he says that possession requires some kind of battle. And the only battle we are called to fight, by the way, as Christians, believers, Christ's disciples, is not physical. It's a fight of faith. Faith is our arsenal, our weaponry. Is what guarantees our victory. First John 5 verse 4. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So we are called to fight what Paul, by the Spirit says, called a good fight of faith. A good fight of faith. A good fight of faith. I want to get to the crux of my message this morning. Beloved, as wonderful as the many blessings that God will bring our way as believers are, we need to keep those blessings in the right perspective. I'll say it again. I know I'm very slow. We need to keep the blessings that God brings our way in the right perspective of what? The perspective of our relationship with God. This is key and critical. This is meat. You see, the blessings that God brings and introduces into our lives, if they're not kept in perspective, of our relationship with God. Listen carefully. You and I will not know when we have switched gods. This is deep stuff. Switched gods. The children of Israel were delivered from the land of bondage, but they came into wilderness, and before they knew it, they brought out their trinket, the gold, and the jewelry, and they made a golden calf. And they said, this is the God that brought us out. They switched gods. <laughs> yeah. You know, Pastor Fred, I had it. This weekend was, for me, it took me to depth of contemplation. I'll tell you why. I'm very concerned with the church of this generation. Very concerned. I don't know how many people who profess to be born again who, if Christ comes now, they will go. They are rapturable. I don't know. It will be in the minority. We need to begin to reappraise our walk with God. This thing is real. Eternity beckons. You're young, you're strong, you're vibrant. Listen, you live 100 years. <laughs> there is eternity to respond to and how we live today our choices our decisions will largely be a reflection of our eternal well-being since we need to reappraise 
our personal walk with God. You can't just be a Christian only because you're born into a Christian family only. You can't be. With the kind of darkness that is hitting our world and age, listen, the world will ask you questions that if you don't know your God, you switch gods. Please listen to me. I want to speak to you as a father indeed. <laughs> you need to ask the Lord to give you personal encounters because it's the encounters you have with God that will sustain you in the dark season. Believe it or not, every human being at one stage, at one phase or the other, they have spots of challenges, tests and trials. And it's your knowing God that will grant you the strength, the wherewithal to overcome. Because the tests are not meant to make you draw back. They are meant to be stepping stones for liftings. No student becomes afraid of exams who wants to be promoted. No. Without exams, you're not going to next level, next grade. So exams are necessity for promotion. If you're prepared for exams, you'll not be panicking. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Oh, uh, GS 101, oh my God, oh my, oh my God. Oh, you, you're not prepared. Because you knew at some point you're going to write the exam. So if you're prepared for it, when others are panicking, you're smiling. Why? You're about to move to the next level. You will pass the test of life. Oh. Say amen. amen. You will pass the test of life. You will, you will, you will. You will pass it. I believe that God is using kingdom stars in Roger Toronto. I do know so. Pillars. People who stand out amongst their generation and they, they will declare Christ with boldness. People like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The Bible says in Daniel 1 about them. It says, it says, and Daniel, must be verse 11, proposed, please listen, saints, he proposed in his heart not to defile himself with the king's meat. Hey. You have to propose in your heart before the test comes. Before the young guy invites you to his room to get down on it. To get down on the dance floor. Propose in your heart. Uh -uh, uh -uh. No ringy, no dingy. Period. Give me a ring at the right time. No ringy, no dingy. You propose in your mind, heart. Don't you say, oh, everybody. No, everybody's not doing it. You think so? Oh, no. Even if you think everybody is doing it, it doesn't mean that it's right. I don't mean that God condones it. The house is quiet. I'm looking into your eyes as a father now. I'm just checking you out. So when you look, say, oh, 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 oh. Uh oh so pops is here praise god give me three fire baptized amen 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 say with me no ringy no dingy all right write it down don't be ashamed no ringy no that's why i got my ring 28 years now or 70 years where's the ring my driving license people are laughing oh you all touch you with not don't the right thing about do you know your body is a temple of the holy ghost yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, let her shout she knows what she's saying that's persuasion you may not shout because you have your you have your, your body is not the temple of your your body is temple of the holy ghost shout amen. amen that's right the bible tells us that jesus christ is coming back not for a church of hip hop array. No, sir. No, sir. He's coming for a church without spot or wrinkle. You're not going to go to the heaven your own earthly father built. No. It's heavenly father. He determines the standard to get there. You meet it, you get there, you don't need it. Uh oh. And this is eternity. You know, these thoughts were so strong in my heart over the weekend. I said, look, you know what? I've got to just speak to you. That when we speak of intimacy, that's my message now. 
the highest and the deepest dimension of intimacy we're adults here is sexual intercourse between a man a man and a woman 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 say with me woman some of you are not looking happy are you a man woman uh -huh. you're not here. so a man adam and a woman not steve eve camera steve. not steve eve don't put the st it says eve having said that it is also essentially intercourse between a man and a woman that are husband and wife uh oh uh oh ouch if you are getting down with somebody who is your husband and wife you're in trouble you need jesus today and the blood will wash your cleanse you of your sins today say amen, amen. Mm. <laughs> you, you, you know what ah if you study the scriptures please listen each time sex occurs between a man and a wife is a type of marriage yes sir first Corinthians 6 17 to 20 he that joins himself to a harlot is one body with a harlot forget the word harlot just a girl boy and girl forget it. you know so each time if you have and if you're doing it you're married to many people that means inside you you are let me let me try to spare you the concern I should spare you thank you this lady oh boy your picture's friend I shouldn't spare you you have many monsters inside you the spirit of jane is there the spirit of who again you don't want to talk here laquisha elizabeth helen and sue zurika they have all kind of spirit you're a monster you need deliverance sir blame of jesus my wife so you, you, you're just in one, you don't know it. That's why, you know, listen, during sex is the easiest way for there to be a transmission of spirits, right or wrong. For a properly consummated marriage, it is strengthening. God intended it. It's a, it's a miracle. It's wonderful. But for anything outside the proper marriage union, listen, oh yeah, yeah, demons are exchanging. Bam, bam, bam. Not just that, your ancestral spirits that follow you from the village, they are jumping into your friend. It's just jumping, pra, pra, pra. So that I'm feeling depressed. I'm feeling suicidal. No, the demons pass from Pia. You need deliverance. Roderick is quiet. No, no, no. <laughs> Praise God. So please, part of what I believe the Lord assigned me to do this morning, as you can see, I've not done it before, is to challenge you all to commitment to sexual purity for the rest of your days. And I'm serious. There's a blessing in that. You see, when you are wrongly intimate with things that are not of God, you've pushed God out of your life. Ought not to be. Ought not to be. Matthew 6.24 says, For no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Remember I said to you, 
that we must keep in perspective the blessings of God in our lives. Otherwise, we can switch God. I want to drop a few more strong points and we'll pray. Hmm. Hmm. This may surprise you. It's maybe young Christians. God did not save you to give you comfort. Yes, sir. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. We have some Lydia prophets here, man. Say it again. Please write it down. God didn't save you to give you comfort. Listen carefully. He saved and redeemed you. Please, church, hear me. To make you conform to Christ likeness. Are we still in church? Look at this. Let's look at the Bible. Romans 8 29. Ay, ay, ay. For whom he foreknew, he also what? Let's read together. Let's go together. This Bible. Let's go together. Church, let's go. One, two, three. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Track with me. Genesis 1, 26. Let us make man in our image. Image. That's the image. That image is Christos. Christ-likeness. All right. So, sir. If any kind of comfort, all right, will bring you closer to the image of Christ, he'll be glad to bring it. Whoa. Whoa. Are we in church? Hiya. Sir. If there is any kind of comfort that will take you away from his image, Christ will keep it away. Bokayata Malaba. Which means, sir, having things, abundance, is not necessarily an endorsement of God's hand on your life. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Heavy stuff, man. But in our day and age, um, um, to have more is to be blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Listen carefully. For a child of God, ah, yeah. You must be willing to understand there are moments God will take you through a process and a journey that will momentarily take what people call comfort from you. All right? Just because it's part of your journey to become like Christ. Man. Man. I won't, I won't trade that for anything in the world. I won't. Look at this, beloved. <laughs> Romans 8, 17 and 18. We're almost there. We're going to pray. And if children, then hears, hears of God, and joint hears with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, don't let that word suffer bother you. It's not suffering of the things he's redeemed you from. No. No. Suffering could include you going through a process with him that we may also be glorified together. 18 says, Apostle Paul's verdict by the Spirit, for I consider, you must consider it too, that the sufferings momentary of these present times are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Listen, there's a coming glory. And God is saying, can you handle it? Can you stand for me? Can you stand for me when all people are given up? Can you like the four Hebrew boys decree and declare? No, bow or burn, we're not going to change our mind. God is our God. Verse 35 of the same chapter says, Romans 8.35, I love this. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are 
killed all the day long. <laughs> we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. My God, through him who loves us. I think our modern day Christianity and church has either suffered amnesia over some scriptures or just ignored it or deleted it. We must preach the total counsel of God. Yes, Otherwise, this age will not stand the pressure of hell released to this generation. You got to be tough on your inside. You can't do this fully. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. You must be rugged. Pray, you pray. Study, you study. No God, you know God. I close with this. I wish I had more time. Turn to Matthew 7, 21. This one is the real, the real deal. This one, you know, there are a few scriptures in the Bible when I read, I, I begin to pray. And the prayer prays, mercy, 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 mercy. This is one of them. You know why. You too, you know why. You too, you pray mercy after this one. I, I trust me, you pray mercy. <laughs> Uh, Matthew 7, 21, 23. Let's read together so we, we, we can all pray message together. Let's go. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. 22. Many, many how many? Many <laughs> will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name 23 is frightening uh, then i will declare to them i never knew you Koda, depart from me you who practice lawlessness now pray for mercy for one minute lift your voice mercy 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 Ikata, Borakata, Brigata, that after all is said and done, he will not say to you or to me, I never knew you. You were not on my record at all, not on my radar. I never knew you. Shall we pray? Zakata, Brigata, Brigata, ask for mercy. Online, cry for mercy. Oh God, grace to finish well. I don't want to be a byword and a proverb. They said we preached, miracles happened. Breakthrough happened. They were on posters and billboards. They were superstars. But Jesus said, I never knew. All these things were not mentioned at all. Somebody praying for mercy. Somebody crying for mercy this hour. Online, on site. Can you plead the blood? Anywhere you've wronged, ask God to forgive you. Any of these areas the Holy Ghost has convicted you, Lord, forgive me. I want to end well. I want to spend eternity with you, Jesus. I cannot continue this way. Deliver me from vices. Any addiction, break by the blood. Any addiction, break by the blood. Addiction to substance or sexual addiction, break by the blood. Come on, pray. Pray by the blood. Father, mercy over this house. Grace to finish well. Grace to finish well. Grace to finish well. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Somebody shout a big amen. amen. Mighty deliverance has just occurred in this house today. Jesus said to people who were so persuaded that they were born again, preaching, teaching, going to church, performing miracles, I never knew you. Look at this. Genesis 4, 1 to 2. And Adam knew Eve, what? His wife, not his girlfriend, sir. Is it? Adam knew Eve, his what? Not boy feet. Huh? A wife. And she conceived, and not his date, by the way. They say, want a date. Hey, just be dating. Until you have a ring, don't drive. It's illegal to drive without a ring. Yes, 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 yes. Hold your body. Take a cool shower. Pray in tongues. You are arrange yourself. Aya, go take care. Jesus, I love you. Now Adam knew what Eve his wife. And she conceived and bore Cain. So intimacy led to conception, led to fruitfulness. And led toward multiplication. And he, and he said, 
I've acquired a man from the Lord. Then she bore again. That's multiplication. This time his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. Hear what the NLT says. Now Adam had sexual relations with his wife. Sexual relations with his wife. Intimacy. Eve and she became pregnant. When she gave birth to Cain, she said, with the Lord's help, I produced a man. Multiplication. Later she gave birth to his brother and named him Abel. When they grew up, Abel, sorry, Abel became a shepherd while Cain cultivated the ground. I wish I had time to share with you a few simple keys to engage the process of intimacy with Jesus. But I'll just leave you with one of them. One is desire. Heaven responds to desire and passion. It's been said that pursuit is the proof of desire. What you really desire, you naturally go after. That's why for some of you who love games, sports, whatever it is you really love, you do it naturally, almost effortlessly. And um, you may struggle a bit with prayer, struggle a bit with Bible study, struggle a bit with serving in church. Ask the Lord to give you the desire to love him and to serve him. We believe that you have been tremendously blessed by the ministry of Apostle Goodhart Obi Ekweme. It is our conviction that this message has begun a mighty work in your life, and we pray that the grace for prompt obedience to the Word of God will rest upon you. We look forward to hear and celebrate your testimonies with great expectations.